Today we ran into a really interesting issue uh, with the 1630 op amp. And some of you might be using this configuration to invert your multiple feedback uh, filter, right? And so we can see we have a non-inverting amplifier, I mean, inverting amplifier, but the resistances are equal. And we should get, um, if we put in a step, just the inverse of the step. But you'll notice that when I run it, and I can send this file out, that it's actually oscillating, right? And if you want to see the input, right, the input. can see is a step okay now you can actually debug what's going on in the if we look at the frequency response so let's just run that actually it's all set up here And we can see that VBI, right, the gain is zero dB, just like you'd expect. The phase is inverted because it's an inverting um, amplifier, right? And if you want to make it look closer to what you're used to seeing for a non inverting buffer, you just put a minus sign there. We can see a little bit of peaking here, but we can also see the phase, which is the delay, um, actually greater than zero, and um, which means we have positive feedback. And so when you have negative feedback in RC and an RC type circuit, you have exponential decay. But with positive feedback, you when you take the inverse Laplace transform, you get e to the some scale factor, but a positive scale factor times t. So you have exponential increase. But um, which would normally just make it go to the rail. But the way this is um, acting is the real part of the the poles of this system are close to zero or, or zero, and so it's only imaginary. And so therefore, we're getting that oscillation behavior. Now, where is that coming from? Well, it's gain bandwidth, but it's just more complicated than the models we're using. Where normally we're used to some high level and one, maybe two bends, but the, but the, um, the phase starts off at zero and just keeps going. But, um in a downward direction in which it does but then the phase comes back up and then it goes down and then it comes back up and then it goes down and that's because there's actually um something we haven't talked about but we've got zeros on the right hand plane and that's to make this circuit operate at a high frequency um essentially, and you're introducing these other non-ideal LFTs to get that to happen. And so when you close it in the feedback loop, we're actually, these, these zeros on the right-hand plane are starting to cause an oscillation. Now, um, one thing you can do is, interestingly enough, if you have a lot of gain, you can get that effect to go away and it'll stop oscillating. Except now you've got a, you know, a rather large, you got a gain of minus 100, which isn't really what you wanted. The solution in this case, the quick solution if you're running out of time, is to just use your old friend the universal op amp 
right? And actually, which is very ideal. And so you can see that the phase is zero and then goes down to um, ultimately 180. You can see that there's two poles there. Or wait, no, that's the, uh, sorry, that's the inverter. Here, uh, blue is the, so there's still two poles. Phase goes down to 180, but it's very well behaved. So that if we go back to our step response, Oops, sorry. I had the gain there and it was going to the rail. And let's just get rid of this guy. So we can see and it's acting very quickly, but um, there's our, what you would expect to be a step response of an inverting gain stage of one. Um, so really, you, you have to look into the data sheets, but a lot of this won't come out into the data sheet. You'd actually really have to run LTSpice with a particular model to notice it. 